Books make you hope. Books make you dream. Books make you laugh. Books make you scream. This is the Books That Make You Show. Discussing books with authors and experts, unraveling the inner pages of all the books that help make us who we are. Hosted by Desiree Duffy. Hello and welcome. It's the Books That Make You Show. I'm your host, Desiree Duffy, and we're talking about books that make you learn about intermittent fasting. Mm-hmm. Diets and health crazes seem to come and go. But one thing that is particularly intriguing about intermittent fasting is that it is shown to have a lot of excellent health benefits. It can affect longevity. And it's actually been around for quite a while. The question is, is this something that you should try? Will it work? How can you do it safely and reap the most benefits? And that's why it's important to talk to an expert. Our guest today is a nationally recognized nutrition, health, and fitness expert and a published author, Dr. Janet Brill. Her latest book is a For Dummies book. It is Intermittent Fasting for Dummies, and it just released just in time for the holidays. Dr. Janet is dedicated to her field and to the broader goal of educating the public on heart health. She's a trusted resource of information for the national media and is frequently a guest on different show. She's been on Dr. Oz numerous times, on CBS, on the couch, and uh, on the balancing act as well on Lifetime. Dr. Janet, hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, my pleasure. Mm -hmm. So let's start with the big question. Can Mm -hmm. you tell us what is intermittent fasting, especially for people who might not be familiar with the term? Well, it's basically a, it's first of all, the most popular health and fitness um, diet, I suppose you could call it, uh, in the world right now. Mm -hmm. And it is um, more of an, it tells you when to eat rather than what to eat. So it is an eating, I guess, schedule. I Uh, But people love it because uh, they find that it's easier to follow. It's much gives you more freedom and is much less restrictive than following the standard old fashioned uh, calorie restricted type of diet that I used to prescribe in the past. Uh, But right now I have turned over a new leaf and gotten really excited about this intermittent fasting idea because back in uh, December of 2019, the New England Journal of Medicine came out with a whole review on uh, the wonders of intermittent fasting and the effects of intermittent fasting on your health and uh, anti-aging and preventing and treating disease. So Uh, Being the scientist that I am, I was like, wow, this is so exciting. And so I decided to uh, look into it. And then um, I was so excited about it that I decided to write this book. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Well, I first found out or learned about intermittent fasting Mm -hmm. several years ago when I was researching and learning about longevity, because that Mm -hmm. is something that I think is really interesting. I it seems that there's a lot of diets out there that that they restrict calories and they actually have negative benefits, but this actually can help you live a little bit longer by some of the research. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. Well, uh, the study of fasting has been around for a long, long time. And you're probably thinking of uh, several years ago when all the buzz was about uh, CR or calorie restriction in in mice. Mm -hmm. And what scientists found was that the ones that ate very low calories live forever. No, they lived (laughs) much, much, much longer than the obese fat rats or mice mm-hmm. or whatever they were. So then the scientists got all excited about calorie restri- restriction and began studying it. But this is is an offshoot of calorie restriction. This is what's called intermittent. So it it's not fasting for a long period of time. It's fasting for very short periods of time repetitively. And that's different uh, than a, a long-term fast. So, uh, and that's actually what I like about it because long-term fasts are really not good for your health. Whereas this, this style of fasting is, is good because it's, it's a uh, short term, but repeated. Can you break down the science for us? What happens to the body? What happens to our metabolism, et cetera, when we practice intermittent fasting? 
Okay, so um, say you uh, eat a meal and um, you have, you know, a turkey sandwich for lunch. Um, the next, for the next four hours or so, your body is in the uh, digestive phase. So you are, your, your small intestine breaks down the carbs, the fats, and the protein into smaller little um, absorbable compounds. And then you're uh, active probably. So you're going to be use, uh, your body uses the, the carbs, fats, or protein to create energy. So, um, and these are, this is what calories are. It's a measure of energy. So your body's going to use some of that food uh, for energy immediately, and then it's going to store the rest for use later on. So that's, you know, about four hours, about uh, then maybe between four and 12 hours, you're in what's called the post-absorptive phase. So that's when your body's like, okay, there's new food coming in. So I need to dip into my stores. So it's uh, basically those hours are when, it, if you're not eating, when your body uses what is stored, it's going to uh, preferentially go for the carbohydrates, the sugar, the glucose, because your brain runs on, on glucose. And so then all those hours, you know, between four and say 12 hours after, um, after you've ab absorbed the food, you're in that phase where you're dipping into your stores. Then is when the exciting part comes in because at, after about 12 hours of no more food, your body has basically depleted your sugar tanks. So you can think of your, your liver and your muscles as fuel tanks and that store sugar or carbohydrate or, or glycogen, glucose. And so by 12 hours, your body has used up. So you're on empty, you're on E. Uh, in terms of um, your sugar stores. And so where are you going to get energy from? So this is what happens is your body goes, does what's called a metabolic switch. And that's when your body has to switch over because there's no, no more sugar, no more glucose left uh, in your stores. So you have to start using fat for energy. So that's, that's the exciting part because that's when uh, you're uh, dipping into your, your adipose, your fat tissue, and you're taking out the, breaking down the fat, which we are all excited about. And then your body takes it to your liver and it turns it into uh, energy in the form of ketones. And then you, your, the ketones travel in your bloodstream and they go to your brain and your brain use, uses uh, that for uh, energy and it goes to your muscles and your, and your muscles use the ketones for energy. So, and that's also when physiologically all of these wonderful things start to happen that promote good health. Not, not only fat loss, which is wonderful, but this state of uh, metabolic switching this new state, this new metabolic state, the fasted state for this short period of time um, is when wonderful things happen. Something uh, called autophagy is going on, goes on in your cells. Autophagy, I don't know if you've ever heard of that. I never did until I researched. But autophagy is like this cellular rejuvenation, this, this basically the fountain of youth. And it's when your cells uh, during this phase build up resistance uh, against uh, inflammation and they also uh, recycle all the bad stuff, get, get rid of it's like housekeeping. Mm -hmm. And it gets rid of all the junk and stuff. And then you create brand shiny, new, beautiful cells with new mitochondria. And it's, um, it's what scientists think uh, lends itself to uh, longevity and to an the anti-aging qualities of uh, doing of this intermittent fasting. So, uh, and again, there's all kinds of other wonderful things that are going on during this fasting period metabolically. So go ahead. Yeah, I wanna talk about all those wonderful things, mm -hmm. but j just to be very pragmatic, yes. I mean, are we going to be hungry? How long are we going to be hungry? Because that's the thing that breaks us, right? Is, you know, if we get hungry, we want to eat and we generally crave sugars and starches. Absolutely. So 
Well, that's, you know, one of the the challenges of doing intermittent fasting, but I can tell you because I've been doing it because I'm my own guinea pig um, and I wanted to try this out. And I can tell you that in the beginning, um, first of all, there's different types, which I'll talk about later, but so you do the one that you can, that you can most fit into your lifestyle. What works for me may not work for you. Um, so Uh, I can tell you, yes, you get hungry, but there's things that you can do. Uh, you, there's um, ways to get around uh, uh, hunger and some of the potential side effects of fasting. Um, so all I can say is that over time, this is a lifestyle. So it's not just like a fad diet where you're going to go on and go off. This is something that can be practiced forever uh, for um for health purposes. And so um, all I can say is from experience and also from my research that these side effects such as hunger actually dissipate. Like I, I typically don't eat anything uh, from eight o'clock at night until four o'clock the next day. And I don't feel hungry at all. I mean, I'll drink coffee, I'll drink a lot of water, I'll drink uh, tea, um, I'll drink a, a diet soda, don't tell anyone, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so, but in the beginning I was hungry, but you know what, it's, it's a, a learning curve, and I tell people that, in, and I write about it in the book, that um, you can basically train yourself, that people have a fear of hunger, and as long as you know that your next meal is coming in a couple hours, you can do this. <laughs> you can do this. I think that's key. Yeah. Because to me, the idea of depraving myself, right. sure. I can do these diets for yes. a couple of weeks, maybe but sometimes is, a couple of days, but yeah. But this knowing is why this is so wonderful because it's that freedom of knowing that when you do eat, I mean, I'm not saying that you should eat, everything and the kitchen sink, but you have the freedom to eat when is when your eating window comes up. And so you can kind of get rid of that, that negative guilt, that guilt trip that a lot of people are always on when they're, when they're on these restrictive diets. So um, it's really very liberating. And uh, that's why I think that it's so popular. And I want to ask you about some of the foods that we can eat. And I think that you're a big fan of the Mediterranean mm -hmm. diet, for yeah. example. But first, can you break down, because you brought it up, there are different methods for different people. And That's true. yeah, can you go over those? Yeah. So I, um, in my book, I, um, I decided to give people the choice of the, I looked up and researched the five, there's different different, many different styles of intermittent fasting. If you go on uh, Google, you'll find, you know, a million ways to do it. And so I decided to narrow it down to the five most popular uh, types that are followed and uh, lay those out step by step in an easy uh, way to, to follow either one. And that way people can decide themselves. So it gives you more freedom to choose the one that works for you. So uh, I'll go real quickly through the five different methods. The first one is called uh, time restricted. And it's the most popular uh, intermittent fasting method out there. It's called the 16-8, meaning uh, you, which most people probably do already because you fast for 16 hours, which is kind of like sleeping and, and, you know, nighttime, and then you have an eight hour eating window. Um, and that eating window can change. So like a lot of people do, uh, 18, six, so you fast for 18 and then, um, and then you eat for six, or you could do fasting for 20 and eat for four, which is what I do. So that's time restricted or the eating window plan. Then you have what's called the warrior diet, uh, where, Uh, war, uh, warriors is a little more hardcore. Uh, it's where you eat pretty much nothing all day and just eat your one big meal at night. Um, the next one is called the five, two diet, which is the fast diet, which was very popular a couple of years ago. You may have heard of it. And that's where two days a week, non-consecutive days, you restrict your calories. So if you're a woman, you eat about 500 calories two days a week. And if you're a man, you eat about 600 calories. And then the other five days you eat normal. So you only have two days that you're dealing with a fast. And then, uh, the fourth uh, method, which is 
definitely the uh, most uh, Spartan and certainly the most difficult, I would think, but also has amazing uh, science behind it, is called alternate day fasting. And that's where people fast every other day, 24 hour fast, only uh, no calorie uh, foods or beverages for 24 hours every other day. So the weight falls off. And then the last one is called the eat, stop, eat diet. And that's basically uh, you fast one or two uh, days a week, non-consecutive. And are these mix and matchable? Could we do the 16-8 method and then for a couple of days Absolutely. we can? Well, what I would suggest is to stick to one or try one and see if it works for you. And then if you and then do that for a couple of weeks. And then if you want to stay and it's working great for you and you're getting good results, stick with that or switch it up. And so and I also go uh, through in my book, I think the number one reason that people don't get the results they want is because during their eating windows, they eat everything. <laughs> and they eat, you know, <laughs> junk food and they eat, you know, they just gorge. So that's not going to work. So I do talk about calories and I have a whole chapter, which people don't even want to hear that word. And I understand the beauty of this uh, plan is to not count calories because nobody likes calorie counting, but I have it kind of as a, um, a backup plan. So if you're not getting the results you want and you wanted to lose weight or gain muscle, whatever, then I give you a, uh, a whole chapter devoted to doing the calculations uh, if you choose to do so. And I think too, that common sense prevails, eating yeah. whole foods and <laughs> fresh vegetables oh, and not so, processed foods, not junk yes. food. It's, that's basically... Well, what that gets do. back to uh, the diet. So this so intermittent fasting is a basic tells you when to eat. As a nutritionist, I tell you what to eat. So um, a lot of people follow uh, the ketogenic or the keto diet with intermittent fasting. That's real popular in uh, in the health and fit, health and fitness world. And I absolutely uh, do not agree with that approach because I'm uh, you know all about health and heart health. And I believe that the um, I believe actually that you can combine uh, do a three pronged approach for maximum health. And one is following an intermittent fast. The second one is combining that with a super healthy eating plant-based uh, whole foods eating regimen, uh, some, like the Mediterranean diet, or if you uh, don't eat uh, animal foods and don't eat fish, then um, a, a, a vegetarian or vegan, whatever, but plant-based is where it's at. And then exercise. So that three-pronged approach is, I think, perfection in terms of how you can take care of your body and live a long and healthy disease-free life. And I think it's important too, because you are somebody who cares about heart health. That is part of who you are in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. And let's talk a little bit more about the Mediterranean diet. I think maybe you need to have been living under a rock to have not heard about <laughs> it. Well, why, why don't you describe it? And, and well, I it. love the Mediterranean diet. Why? Because you may have kind of pick this up from talking to me. I like to help people to help themselves by being practical. And I like to give advice that people will follow. So the beauty of the Mediterranean diet is the food tastes so good. And so I'm not telling you to cut out, you know, yummy food. I'm not telling you to cut out olive oil, which is, you know, just makes food delicious. I'm not telling you to cut out dark chocolate or, or a glass of red wine. I'm like, you know what? Have it and enjoy life. And the Mediterranean diet is, it's just that it's healthy. It promotes good heart health. It, people live longer. It treats disease. It prevents disease and it tastes good and is easy to follow. So in my book, doesn't get better than that. And I think that's important too, because a, a lot of times people are just so used to eating butter margarine, the unhealthy fats. And oh my God, if you have a good, get the good olive oil. That That's important. And there's different types and we don't have to go into that. 
but when but you I do start- talk about that uh, in in my in my new book about because um, there's a lot of fake uh, olive oils floating around out there. And I, you know, I'm such an olive oil aficionado and I actually talk about about um, how to find and purchase an authentic extra virgin olive oil that's not fake. Um, Mm -hmm. So, uh, and there's, there's, I think eight out of 10 of the olive oils on in, on the supermarket shelf, a study found uh, out of UC Davis uh, found were not authentic. So that's very disturbing. So, uh, and it's the extra, the authentic extra virgin that is the healthful um, liquid gold is, (laughs) <laughs> yes, yes. And you can infuse it and buy it infused oh, with so yes. many different things. Love and it, it seems to, correct me if I'm wrong, but mm-hmm. if you're buying olive oil, that's important. It imported that mm-hmm. that generally speaking is better olive oil. Is that correct? Not necessarily. No. Um, you want to think of olive oil as uh, fresh squeezed orange juice. It's actually a fruit. So it's a fruit juice. And it's not treated with uh, like other vegetable oils like corn oil or, or safflower oil. It's not treated with heat and chemicals. That's what makes it so beautiful because it's cold pressed. So, um, but because it's a fresh, uh, a fruit juice, you want to, you don't want to eat, you know, old orange juice. <laughs> so uh, you want to buy one that's harvested most recently. So you have to think of the antipodal, the, the Northern hemisphere and the Southern hemisphere. So you want to buy, um, which I talk about, it gets complicated, but I make it very simple in, in the book. And I talk about, you know, buying it from the Southern hemisphere when the crush date is in, in uh, May and June and buying it from the Northern hemisphere when the crush date is in the fall. And you want to buy the most recent and you also want to buy it from a single origin and there's a whole a whole checklist. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Well, I, I do have my copy of the book. I just oh, yeah. got it yesterday. So I'm, I'm going to check out that section because yes. I, I love my, my olive oil and I love my red wine and I love my Mediterranean diet. Oh, wonderful. Good. Now you're going to combine the intermittent fasting and exercise and you're good to go. Trifecta. Exactly. <laughs> Let's let's talk about that heart health too a little bit because okay mm-hmm. I mean, you you got you got us hooked with the intermittent fasting to lose weight and and everything yes. else but let's talk yeah. about some of those other health benefits too. Okay, well first of all, um, not only do you lose weight, but the beauty of intermittent fasting is that it targets that belly fat and it's called visceral fat, which is very dangerous. That's the uh, type of fat around the stomach that. Um, is it increases your risk of developing a whole host of diseases, heart disease, diabetes, high, high blood pressure. So um, the fact that just when you eat is going to uh, promote loss of, of belly fat or target that belly fat is phenomenal. Um, also, uh, you, um, it helps prevent, it helps lower uh, your um, bad, your LDL cholesterol. So again, just the pattern of eating has been shown to uh, not only lower your bad cholesterol, but raise your good, your, your uh, uh, HDL or your healthy um, blood cholesterol as well. It lowers triglycerides, which are dangerous for the heart. It lowers blood pressure, which is, promotes, uh, which is the number one cause of stroke and is rampant uh, um, among um, Americans, so epidemic, as is type two diabetes. Uh, so it's um, it's a wonderful way to uh, to approach treating uh, type two diabetes and overweight, and especially weight around the middle, because um, it increases the sensitivity of your cells to insulin. Now, insulin resistance is a very uh, common uh, situation, which is uh, prevents the blood sugar from entering the cells. The insulin is ineffective. So uh, following an intermittent fast and combining that with walking or exercise is going to increase your your muscle cell sensitivity to insulin and lower your fasting blood glucose, which is a beautiful thing if you are pre-diabetic, which so many Americans are, or if you have been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. So, and that's, uh, and also diabetics are very prone. Basically, I, I call it a fast track to a heart attack. So diabetics are very prone to heart disease. So we got to get, uh, get that under control. 
Absolutely. And with our Western diet, the foods that we usually eat, Mm -hmm. and the fact that this Western diet has just been Mm -hmm. taken up all over the world. It's really sad sometimes when you hear about a certain place where people were healthy and running, and then they get the Western diet. And that's where it, it, yeah. It's called the sad diet, standard American diet. Yeah, it it is. It is very sad. We got to switch it up to that beautiful, healthy Mediterranean style and more plants, whole, uh, less processed foods. It's very simple. More plants, less animals um, and certainly less beef. (laughs) Because that's that's better for the planet. Um, I, I was exactly, you know, th- that's the great thing about this is mm-hmm. it, there's ramifications, positive ramifications so in many so many positive. areas. So many areas, and um, that's responsible eating. So I think that everyone on on planet Earth needs to eat more uh, vegetable protein and less animal protein for the health of of human beings, for the health of the animals, and for the health of, of the planet. Absolutely. And this show cannot give medical advice. I'll throw that caveat out there because that's just one of those things. People should always consult with their regular physician before undertaking any kind of diet. Absolutely. Are, are there any are there any illnesses or any people out there that might really want to be aware of the fact that they should talk to their doctor before doing this? Well, there are, there- are absolutely people that that should not uh, and uh, follow uh, a program of intermittent fasting. People that have eating disorders or uh, have been diagnosed with eating disorders or are prone to eating disorders, this is not for them. Uh, children, absolutely not. Um, let me think, uh, pregnant or breastfeeding moms, women mm-hmm. know, or if they're trying to get pregnant, not the time to do intermittent fasting. Uh, let's see, people with diagnosed medical conditions. I was talking about diabetics. You need to get the okay and uh, from your, your physician. Uh, if you have any diagnosed uh, medical uh, situation, medical diagnosis, uh, you need to be working uh, under the watchful eye of your um, physician. And um, if you're taking uh, prescription meds that have to be taken with food, you need to run it by your doctor and then uh, adjust your intermittent fast so that you take your meds when during your eating window. So, uh, and also, and especially, I can't say this enough, a type one diabetic that's insulin dependent, they need to definitely be, uh, get the okay from their physician and work very closely with a, a dietitian and their physician to, um, if they want to do intermittent fasting, because there's a lot of dangers with, uh, um, hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia. So that's, uh, that should be noted. And I am sure that there are so many people that can benefit from this book and intermittent fasting, but who specifically would you like to recommend the book for? Are there any age ranges or types of people that you think should especially check this out? I think that anyone that's interested in learning about, uh, about this new, um, this new type of eating that uh, is basically uh, grounded in good science. I'm a scientist and I only uh, promote uh, uh, diets and, and uh, advice that I believe has, has enough uh, data behind it to, to support it. And I'm all excited. And I think that anyone, any adult um, that's uh, interested in, um, in learning more about nutrition and, and about a healthy lifestyle uh, should um, try it. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, or certainly learn about it. And uh, even if you don't want to do the intermittent fasting, you can uh, learn about um, what good, just good nutrition. And I taught, I give some basic examples of um, medi- how to follow a Mediterranean diet. And I also throw in some really uh, easy to make uh, nutritious um, foods and recipes, as well as how to equip your kitchen. I know with the pandemic, everyone's been cooking at home. So I give some real quick tips about what you could have to make your kitchen experience uh, a lot easier and um, a lot more efficient. And that's another thing that I love about this, about intermittent fasting, because I'm all about having more time for me. And um, because you're eating less food, then there's uh, less time in the kitchen and there's less cooking and there's less cleaning up. So it's that's another uh, benefit that I didn't talk about. (laughs) 
<laughs> and and that's a great benefit. I really like it. And it's so true. Right now we have we have a little extra time on our hands. Yes. So <laughs> yeah, now's a good time to give it a shot. And you're yes. doing this too. I, I want to underscore the fact that you are doing this. How I different do you feel? Can you I love it? I will I will eat this way the rest of my life. <laughs> wow. I will. And how, I mean, how long have you been doing it since you read the study? Is is that about yeah, when you started? I, I kind of, well, I decided to, you know, this has been such a difficult year <laughs> for all of us and me as well. And um, so I decided to make lemonade out of lemons and um, I threw myself, you know, in, into researching uh, intermittent fasting when this whole thing started and I, it really saved, saved me, <laughs> my, my, uh, my mental attitude, because I, I was fascinated by this. And I, I love um, researching and, uh, and writing. So I wrote this book during the pandemic, and it kept me sane. And I also decided this is a really good time to try this, seeing that I'm recommending it. So uh, yes, I've been doing it now for, for what, like six months. And I feel... I don't feel hungry anymore. I have a lot of energy. I exercise every day. And um, I like not uh, not being in the kitchen that much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the rest I of my family is not too happy about it, but oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, exactly. Exactly. I, well, I, we're, we're running out of time. I could I could really just talk to you all day on about yeah. this. But really quick, is there a difference for men and women? In, um, in doing the diet, the intermittent fasting? Well, it depends. Uh, you know, there's a lot of men uh, and, and women too that want to do this uh, without not to lose weight, but to gain lean body mass, lean muscle, and lose body fat. So, and they're going to have a different approach than the large majority of people that are doing this probably want to do it to lose weight. So those people have a different strategy. And I talk about that because they have to imp- imp- employ uh, um, a a very um, strenuous program of strength training. They have to time their food uh, around their strength training workouts. They have to eat enough calories as opposed to people that want to lose weight and don't care about gaining muscle. They, um, they want to, they need to eat less calories. So uh, Mm -hmm. yes. So those people need uh, to do it a little bit differently, which I talk about in the book. Wonderful. And the book is available on Amazon and locations where you go to buy books. Can you tell people really quick where they can find out more specifically about you, your website, your social media? Um, my website is www.drjanet.com, D-R-J-A-N-E-T.com. And then I also have a Mediterranean uh, um, website. It's called mediterraneannutritionist.com. And that's all things Mediterranean. And my other, drjanet.com, is very general uh, about me. And it has all my books and uh, blog and all that kind of stuff. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Dr. Janet Brill, thank you so much for being with us today. This is excellent. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. And happy holidays. Happy holidays. And Mm -hmm. thank you, everybody, for joining us on the Books That Make You show. You can find out more information about us on our website. That's booksthatmakeyou.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Until next time, all of my bookish buddies, please enjoy all of the books that make you exactly who you are. The executive producer for Books That Make You is Desiree Duffy. Produced and sound mastered by Phil Jean Grande. Engineering by Dave Nabox. Social media and promotion by Bree Sweeter. For more, visit booksthatmakeyou.com.